African Green Revolution Forum here in Kigali, Rwanda. We are live at the Kigali Convention Center. My name is Jeff Koinange. I'll be your moderator for this youth town hall, a very historic town hall that'll feature youth not only live here at the Kigali Convention Center, but live across the continent, from Lagos to Nairobi, from Harare to Banjul, from Mogadishu, all across the continent, the youth are gonna be speaking out virtually with us this afternoon. And just to add the fact that this is a serious event, a man who's been promoting the youth from day one. We're gonna be joined live on the screen very shortly by His Excellency Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda. That's gonna be our show this afternoon, folks. It's all about the youth, so start tweeting. The Twitter handles are at AGRF, at Agra. We have several hashtags, hashtag feed the cities, hashtag grow the continent, hashtag virtual summit, hashtag AGRF 2020, hashtag youth town hall. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite the African Green Revolution chair of the partners group, who also happens to be former Pro Ethiopian prime minister, His Excellency Haile Mariam Desale, will give an opening remarks and also introduce the president of Rwanda. His Excellency Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, President Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Ministers, dignitaries and emerging dignitaries, both those of you present here in Kigali and those joining us virtually all across the country, the continent, and the world. It is a distinct honor to be with you here today for this youth town hall discussion. Over the years, the AGRF town hall has become one of our hallmark session of the AGRF Summit. It is one we look forward to as an opportunity to hear from our young people rather than simply to be present with them. The future of Africa's agriculture rests with the youth, African youth. Africa is in the height and the midst of a crisis and also an opportunity and you can see a hell lot of emergencies, including COVID-19 pandemic, climate-induced extreme drought and floods, desert locusts, fall worms, name it. The fact is that most African youth are not employed. By 2035, within the coming 15 years, Africa should generate 350 million new jobs according to the World Bank estimate. This is, there is reasonable potential for agriculture to create employment and jobs. African youth has not yet fully rea realized agriculture as a profitable opportunity for livelihood. You can challenge this notion if you like. Of course, we are not talking about subsistence agriculture when it comes saying that agriculture has potential. It is only about commercial, technology-driven, modern agriculture, and this is the best way to entice young people to engage in the farms. Digital and precision agriculture is attractive to the youth. Is it? This is what we old guys are assuming. What is your perspective in this regard should be the discussion at this forum. Today's town hall is a unique platform. I'm sure that African youth talking to their fellow youth to bring about a new perspective, a unique perspective on the future of African agriculture and African youth employment and jobs. As AGRF group, we are here today to learn and share experiences with you. 
with all stakeholders with the vision of transforming Africa's agriculture. I'm sure again, there are a number of experiences and best practices of our young people in the agri-food systems, both from the in innovators and adapters alike. What is the biggest or binding constraints to make learning uh, and agriculture as a career for the young as an African youth? It is learning, the, is it learning the digital and technological skill needed in today's agriculture production and the marketing systems? Or is it making land available to the youth to fund? Or it is the land tenure system we have? How can more yields from smaller space be produced? Will vertical agriculture be feasible given our capability? Above all, do you feel that you are getting or receive political or financial support that allows you to be viable or scale up your innovations and creativity? Do governments, development assistance groups, and the private sector willing to invest in agricultural innovation hubs and incubation centers? What can be done to maximize that? Finally, a simple question. Do you have a commitment to engage and take an interest in modern, innovative agri-food systems as a whole? The importance of this event grew over the years, thanks in large, in large part to my predecessor, the previous chairman of AGRA, and the AGRF Partners Group, Strive Masiwa. I want to recognize his leadership today in this agenda, and the Strive regrets that he can't be here with us this year due to other essential obligations and work he is along to support the continent with COVID-19 response. Instead, I have the pleasure today to invite another friend who is an equal champion of youth leadership across the continent. Another leader who recognizes that our future belongs to our youth and we must do ever more to support our ideas, efforts, and leadership if we are to achieve our ambitious goals. Of course, this is my friend, His Excellency President Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda, his Excellency had an opportunity to meet the other day to discuss the AGRF summit, and he immediately seized upon this opportunity to be with you here today when I mentioned that this youth town hall would be taking place. This is certainly a testament that to the influence and the importance of the youth with us today, and so appreciate your Excellency joining with us to share your thoughts and questions. It is also a testament to the special topic that we are engaging on this town hall as an AGRF community. This topic is discussion about where we stand in the goals we have set for ourselves as countries and communities under the SDGs and how we can get on track even in the face of a global pandemic. One of the best opportunities to do this is through improving the way our food systems work, all the way from production to consumption and what we do with our food waste. This is a discussion that is emerging that the global level, particularly under the call by the UN Secretary General for a Food System Summit in 2021. But we must lead on this agenda as a continent, as an African countries and within our cities and communities. So today, we are pleased to hear a few words from His Excellency about his vision, but more importantly to hear from as many youth leaders as possible about your ideas that will shape the future we want. This engagement with the AGRF community is a key part of this journey together. So I look forward to your thoughts today, and I look forward to working with all of you moving forward. For now, Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to the Excellency President.
Paul Kagame. Uh, good afternoon, my brother, Excellency Hail Mariam de Salen, Dr. Agnes Karivata, our moderator, Jeff Koinange, and all the town hall participants, especially the youth. I welcome you all to Rwanda to participate in this uh, hybrid gathering and also those joining us remotely. I thank AGR and partners for organizing these meetings and for choosing Kigali as the venue. Despite the COVID pandemic, I trust you will take time to safely enjoy your stay in Rwanda. I was invited uh, to interact with you before your session today, and I'm very happy to join you. The potential of agriculture on our continent is vast. We need to invest more and get more out of the investments we have already made. This includes public infrastructure and value chains, particularly for the growing urban food markets that underpin prosperity in rural areas. What we need from you is the corresponding focus and innovative spirit so that agriculture can indeed serve as the basis of Africa's economic transformation. Without uh, much ado, I thank you and look forward to discussing this further with you today. Most welcome once again. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and great to see you. I know you've been in cabinet meetings most of the day, but you insisted you wanted to engage the youth. So we have youth from across the continent, from Lagos to Johannesburg, from Nairobi to the Gambia, from Mogadishu to Harare, and of course here, locally, live. Like you said, it's a hybrid youth town hall. So we're, we're all together here, and the, the questions from the youth. We're gonna go first straight to Nairobi, where you find Nima Grace Motemi, who has a question for President Kagame. Nima, what is your question for President Kagame? Thank you very much, Mr. President. I believe I speak for all the youth of Africa today when I say it's a rare privilege to have the head of state engaging with us directly on our responsibility uh, in building our continent back better following the global pandemic. Specifically as regards to food system, it's been reported that Africa holds the key to feeding its growing populations, especially in cities, as well as feeding the rest of the world. This means most countries from, uh, have to move from being net importers of food, uh, as is currently the reality, to net exporters. So, uh, Mr. President, what is your vision for the future of food systems? In our vision, we want to transform our agriculture from mostly subsistence to a modern knowledge-based sector that ensures both food and nutrition security and also creates value and contributes to our economy. This means, therefore, a stronger role for the private sector including farmers, with the government acting as the market enabler rather than dominating the market. And increased profits will come from higher yields 
and higher value agricultural commodities such as horticulture, poultry, pork, and fisheries, just to mention a few. So our vision brings all that together and uh, the rest is for our people to do. Absolutely. The rest is for our people to do. Mr. President, we have a question all the way from Johannesburg. Mashiri Zvarimwa is, the, is an agribusiness and digital innovation expert. Mashiri, over to you. What's your question for President Kagame? Thank you very much, Jeff, and uh, good afternoon, uh, Your Excellency. Mr. President, youth are the future of uh, African food systems. What can you do to help us build this future together? Well, besides uh, enabling uh, good policy, we are working uh, to provide the required infrastructure and uh, to support research. And I, you will find that this is across the whole continent. Each country really is focused on a number of things, but these are the common ones. We have put in place social protection and emergency response measures, especially for climate change adaptation and increased access to finance for farmers. In Rwanda, particularly, we have partnered with the Howard Buffett Foundation to establish the Rwanda Institute for Conservation Agriculture, which is educating a new generation of agriculture entrepreneurs in the latest sustainable farming practices. Rwanda has also facilitated the establishment of a youth platform, the Rwanda Youth in Agribusiness Forum. And some of you are here today, which uh, targets opportunities in the agricultural sector domestically and uh, regionally. All right, Mr. President, thank you so much. Thanks, Mashiri, for that question. Uh, Mr. President, I know you're busy. You have to go back to your cabinet meeting, but I'm sure you have a challenge to the youth right now. What is it you want that you're challenging them going forward? What would you want them to know going forward? I want the young people uh, first based on the question that uh, what do they want for the future of food in the communities where these young people live? And how will they lead everyone, lead us? there where they want us to be. I think the youth must be challenging themselves to think about uh, these particular questions. What do they want themselves in the future of food in our communities? But secondly, what do they want or what do they see as their role to lead these communities? to lead the people of Africa in that place where we want to be. Those are the two aspects I would want to leave with the, the young people to think about and challenge themselves. But we shall work together. It's the young, it's the old working together to achieve all this. Absolutely, two good questions, Mr. President. We're gonna be pondering that in the next couple of hours. We will beg your leave, Mr. President, and also former Prime Minister of Ethiopia. As we think about those two questions, folks from around the continent, what do you want? And most especially, how will you lead us to where you want us to be? Mr. President, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. The youth now will engage for the next couple of hours in this historic town hall meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I wish you all the best. Uh for the work you have before you today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right.
Prime Minister, anytime you wish is good. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to go straight to Tijani, uh, Falat Tijani, a consultant at Sahel Consulting in Lagos, Nigeria. Falat, if you can hear me, you heard the president's question there. What do you want? How will you lead us to where we want to be? Falat. What I want to see in the African food system is uh, more collaborations. And collaborations at the institutional level, I'm thinking about is through knowledge sharing. Uh, we know, we want to see, I want to see uh, an African food system whereby governments and the various institutions come together and share the different knowledge that they've gathered over the years while recognizing the, the, the realities of their various countries. At the value, at the grassroots level, I want to make sure we have farmers, an ecosystem where farmers are empowered, but not only farmers, but also all the other players in the system. We have the, we all know the important role that farmers play, but we also have the service providers. We have the agribusinesses that are also important players that boost the economy of each country. Mm. Providing a platform where all these players come together and uh, collaborate and share knowledge, share the various innovations that they've come across. Imagine a world where some, a farmer in Nigeria, Ibada in Nigeria, can reach out to a farmer in Zimbabwe mm. and then share knowledge about the production of food. That is an ecosystem that we want to have. And the, through some of our work, personally, what we have, we have a platform that is called the Nourishing Africa Platform. That is, seeking, is a hub that is seeking to bring together stakeholders along the value chains and promoting food Food from Nigeria, food from South Africa, and different parts of the world. Oh, all Thank right. You. Thank you for luck. And let's, speaking of reaching out, let's reach out from Lagos to Banjul, where we find Ibrahim Sise of CAADP Youth Network. Ibrahim, your thoughts on these two provoking questions? Uh, I greet you in the name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful, for bringing us together today. Uh, first of all, what we want is, first, is job creation. We need to create jobs for young people in the agribusiness and agricultural value chain. Second is also wealth creation. So when you think agriculture, you think wealth. And number three is human security, because when there is food security, there's human security. And how do we intend to do this? How do we intend to lead this, as the president asked? The president himself is a champion of the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program, uh, which we run the youth network. So what we want to do is we realize that in 2011, the African Union head of state met in Malabo to, to reduce youth unemployment by 2% every year from 2011 to date, but that does not happen. In fact, youth unemployment has been on the increase every year. So what we want to do in our network is to create 1 million jobs for young people in the agricultural value chain by 2025. And we intend to do this by ushering in 1,000 young entrepreneurs by 2021 that will in turn create these 1 million jobs. How do we intend to get there? We intend to get there through farm. It's not the physical farm. F stands for finance, innovative financing, especially for young women in agriculture. A stands for access to land, access to technology, and also access to renewable energy. And then R stands for renewable energies that are transferable and also affordable. M is market and mobility. This is because the human mind is a living farm, and what young people need to do is to cultivate the right ideas and harvest success for the Africa we want by 2062. Hello. Excellent, Ibrahim. Finance, uh, access, renewable energy, and markets. Farm, very well put. Okay, we're going to come back to Kigali, live here at the convention center, where we find uh, Emmanuel Ndayizige, right? Ndayizige, sorry. Ndayizige, he's chairman of youth company Horticulture in Reality Corporation, or HORECO. Emmanuel, your thoughts? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Emmanuel Daizigi, as you mentioned. I'm Chief Executive Officer, CEO of Horticulture in Reality Corporation, called Horeco. 
So as you may know, Horeco is a big uh, organization of young engineers who got trained in Israel. So upon coming to the country, we met and agreed to create this organization so that we can uh, disseminate these skills got from Israel and also in other academia. So currently we are implementing the different projects where one is focusing in valorizing uh, irrigation schemes where around 100 young engineers are coaching the farmers uh, associated in different cooperatives. Most importantly, we are partnering also with the AGRA, Alliance for Agri Revolution, in the project of producing potato seeds where around 20 hectares are uh, seasonally used to produce pre basic and basic seeds. So, um, if really I tackle about the challenges that we are facing, which can be the opportunities for the entrepreneurs who are in my country, Rwanda, and also in Africa, I would like first of all talk about the seed availability and distribution. Uh, in Kenya, Rwanda, we have a, um, a proverb says, Umana akira miterura, which means if we are not caring about our kids in their childhood, really we are so destroying their future. As well as in crops, if you are not starting from the seeds, good seeds, we are not having a good production. So you, can, you can't imagine how much countries that we are importing from abroad, and really it is opportunities for the entrepreneurs in Africa who can use those opportunities to produce the seeds while importing them from abroad. The last time we used to import the seeds of kiwis, the badai, one kg costed us around 2,000 USD. So really I can encourage the entrepreneurs to come and to invest in that sector of seed production. But I cannot finish without ta uh, talking about mechanization, where really we need to involve the mechanization if we need to, to, to do agriculture in a sustainable way. Whether in land preparation, in seed sowing, in, uh, in pest and disease control, in harvesting, in post-harvesting, because this will help us to reduce the time to have the good quality, quantity, and also will reduce the cost of production for the farmers. So we are the witness, all, all of us, in the lockdown uh, pandemic period, everyone used to store food. So it showed the world that agriculture is the most important sector in human being. Mm. So let's put our endeavors okay. in agriculture so that we'll be able to feed our citizens, our people, including the cities where we live. May all God bless you, may God bless everyone here presented. All right, Emmanuel, thank you very much for that. Uh, from the convention center in Kigali, let's go all the way to Lusaka, Zambia. We find Yunike Firinari. She's a founder and president, Zambia Young Emerging Farmers Association, and also executive director of Amicus Zambia Limited. Yunike, your thoughts? Thank you, Jeff. For me, it's sustainability. As a smallholder farmer, you know, despite having access to so much land, I believe we have to be mindful of our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So for me, food systems should be able to accommodate the various cultures, norms, values that Africa has as a continent so that everybody's accommodated. And this in turn will encourage all of us to engage in sustainable means of agriculture and all stakeholders should be encouraged to do so. One major challenge that I've seen in the agriculture value chain, especially for us young people, is access to finance. We are asked to provide loans, collateral, for us to get uh, money from the bank. But the majority of the smallholder farmers, especially young people, are people who've just left school, people who are just graduates, who don't really have collateral. So for me, access to finance should be something that really we should address for youths to sustainably engage in agriculture. Thank you. Very good point, Unike. Sustainability and access to finance. And I'm sure Wanja Rispa, who's a student and founding member of Ag AgriCua in Nairobi, you have the same challenges as well there in Nairobi, don't you, Rispa? Yes, Jeff, I do share the same sentiments as Unike, but mine is more directed towards specification. I believe there's a very huge gap in farming in Africa. 
whereby we have a very large of our population in farming, doing small scale farming, but that does not exactly answer our food needs and neither does it protect the sustainability of our food systems for the future. So I believe what I see as the biggest opportunity for food systems in Africa is specification whereby farmers can unite and be farming just one uh, maybe crop or specifying to just do one activity in the many opportunities within the food systems and that way we are guaranteed of a future that both takes care of the needs of consumers and the farmers themselves because at the end of the day my biggest conviction is that every human being in Africa deserves dignity and okay. that involves Risper, not yeah. doing poverty. Yes? Let me ask you real quick. You heard what the president said. Remember those two questions. What do yeah. you see as your role to lead the people of Africa to where you want us to be? What is your role? Okay, um, I think my role number one is as a young person speaking out to other young people like myself, but also being actively involved in activities that I believe are giving us, are leading us toward that future. And I believe I'm already in that space, given that I'm currently the president of Lapid Leaders Africa Student Council, which is dealing with empowering and training young people to take up leadership in Africa in whatever area they feel calls to, whether it's agriculture or it's in recycling or it's in waste management, whichever the case, I think I'm already playing that role. Excellent, thank you so much for that. Okay, from Nairobi, let's come back to the Kigali Convention Center. Davis Mugira, the CEO and founder of SpiderBit. Davis, what, what is SpiderBit? Uh, thank you. SpiderBit is a bit company we specialize in e-commerce solutions for agricultural commodities. Okay, you heard your president there right now a few moments ago. What do you want, Davis? What do you want? I want market access for the farmers. Because uh, especially when you're talking about youth, when you're talking about farmers, and nobody's going to do agriculture if it's not profitable. Nobody is going to invest into the farm production, and in the end, is not able to get to secure the market. So we find that it's important to do what it takes, especially involving technology to increase the market access, to be able to market to a wide uh, market of buyers. Traditionally in Africa, the market is person to person. But how can we now leverage the technology, especially the internet, to be able to access the market all over the world. How do, my, how do I make sure that I put my seed in the soil when I have already secured the market? If only if we embrace, embrace technology, if we embrace e-commerce platforms like eHaho, and be able to secure the market. Because uh, if you look at the uh, old men and women in agriculture, they have no choice. They are doing this, uh, they have no alternative. But if now you bring somebody from, as a graduate, to go into a business, invest, and in the end, in car losses, he has an alternative to go look for a job in an office. It's mm -hmm. only way to make sure that we have the market ahead of time. This is what Spiderbit is doing. We're providing e-commerce solutions to the farmers. Thank you. Fantastic, good stuff, Davis, appreciate that. Okay, from the convention center, let's try and see if Esnaf Divasoni is on. Esnaf, are you somewhere out there online? If not, we can go to Mohammed Abdi Noor in Mogadishu. Yes, I'm, he I'm oh, here. Oh, there she is. Okay, Esnaf, good to see you. What do you want, Esnaf? How can you lead us there? I believe in skills sharing. Education is the key. Once you have educated youth, you can empower them for them to be able to produce better and to be climate smart. I'm looking at sharing skills and knowledge with the forgotten communities. And we are already doing this in parts of Zimbabwe through a program that we are calling the Agricultural Guide Program with Comfort. And we are empowering young men to ensure that they produce better. Once they produce better, they can be able to feed their families, to feed their communities. and send more food to the cities. 
This is all through skills sharing and through education. I want to see a youth that is educated, that is empowered in agriculture. That is the only way we can ensure that we have sustainable food systems in Africa. Thank you. Very well put. I hadn't asked you where you are, Esnat, but I figured you talked about Zimbabwe, so you must be in Zimbabwe. Yes, I'm in Arare, Zimbabwe. Fantastic. Thank you, Esnat. Stay on the line, folks. This is a great conversation. Let's go from Harare. Let's go to Mogadishu. We find Mohammed Abdi Noor. He's a member and founder of Youth Agro Marine Development Association. Salam alaikum, my brother. Talk to us. What do you want? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm great to be here. Uh, uh, my role in the you know in the in the youth of the food system is to organize and you know to assist you know youth farmers. You know, uh, especially uh, youth that they drop out, you know, the schoolies and, you know, those graduated from high schoolies. Uh, uh, my point today is here to make, you know, is uh, basic, you know, uh, to, to give like capacity building and training for this youth. Uh, and especially, you know, the main challenge that, you know, that this youth that they have is, uh, they don't have, you know, uh, you know, organization or assisting, you know, centers, you know, to organize CEOs and to give, you know, assistance and then to make it like, you know, uh, centers that they can get, you know, education that they can apply, you know, for, the, for, for, their, for, their, for their home cities. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, the farmers is, is, is you know, uh, the, the vulnerable co community that the, the primary producers. So uh, we encourage for those actors, especially government is international NGOs to give, you know, basic assistance, especially financing and, you know, insurance if maybe it happened like, like some disasters. Um, like, for example, in some regions in East Africa, especially in Somalia now, it has happened some like uh, diseases, especially uh, locusts, that they just removed all the crops. So if those farmers, they can get like some insurance, in the future, they have, you know, uh, motivation to continue, you know, for their production. So uh, I would like to say here to, to, today, uh, to, it is very important to give for these farmers for assistance and organize. That's my point. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, Mohammed Abdino. Good point. Insurance in case of locusts, insurance in case of shocks, we call them. That's a very good point there. From Mogadishu, let's go to Nairobi. Amanda Namayi, now you're the lead of Go Getters. What is Go Getters for those who don't know? Amanda, tell us. Yes, thank you, Jeff, and hello to everyone who is tuning in. So, um, the Go Getters um, is a collaborative community. I'd like to echo what His Excellency Haile Mariam said that Africans should talk together and talk with each other. So, the Go Getters Africa is a platform that brings together African agripreneurs who are youth, where they come from across the value chains. And we are not just talking about the youth, we are, we are talking together as the youth. And also this platform brings together partners, policymakers, and everyone else in the ecosystem. So seeing that we've been hosted today by the president of Rwanda, it is very encouraging. So Go Getters Africa brings together every value chain player in one home online community. And also we do have the Go Getters Prize. The pitches were yesterday, the finale is tomorrow. So please join in and watch. And yes, it's a safe space for youth to get opportunities to grow and to interact with each other. I'm glad you mentioned that Go Getters Prize uh, because um, there's some people who've never heard about it. And then some people who just jump on it, they grab the ball and they run with it. You saw, you've seen some of the entries there. What's the potential like across the continent with these young people you're engaging with? What's the potential? There's great, great potential. Actually, um, I'd like to quote Winston, Winston Churchill, never let a crisis go to waste. <laughs> so we could see from the pitches yesterday 
that there were some innovations that came up during the COVID-19 storm. And it was exciting to see how, as youth, we are thinking outside the box. We are not being contained by any situation, be it COVID, be it drought, be it locusts. As youth, we are agile, we're thinking on our feet. So there's a lot of potential. There, there are lots of industries that we saw, innovation, ICT, finance, coming together to bolster the agriculture sector. So it is really exciting to see um, the youth take up the ball, as you say. So yes, please, the finale is tomorrow. <laughs> you will see more, yes. Fantastic, thanks, Amanda Namai. She's the lead at Go Getters Africa. Let's come back to the Kigali Convention Center where you find our very own Etienne Niyigaba. Now, he's a youth engagement in agriculture network. Etienne, your thoughts? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, uh, my name is Etienne Niyigaba, as you said, and I'm the founder of Youth Engagement in Agriculture Network, uh, which is a social enterprise in agriculture extension in Rwanda. Um, coming back to the question or to the uh, challenge we got from the, uh, His Excellency, uh, what do you want? What, what, am I, what do I want uh, uh, for this agriculture sector to be somehow advanced? So uh, with the network we are having and the social enterprise, YAN, Youth Engagement in Agriculture Network, uh, we want the skill deployment. You know, we are having a community of farmers, but uh, most importantly, our farmers are lacking a big part of skills uh, because, you know, agriculture is a science and that science have to be applied in the soil which has a science behind. So we are trying our best to deploy uh, the scientific facts to the community and we are teaching farmers, we are facilitating farmers in their farms to get the best from their soil. Iman, Etienne, what is your role? What is your role? Uh, my role in 2014, I founded this social enterprise, and now, up to now, we are serving up to 1,200 uh, farmers throughout Rwanda, and within uh, uh, the next five years, we are aiming to reach uh, 150,000 farmers uh, with private extension activities. We are doing this out of uh, our uh, passion as young people, and we are giving job to young people uh, to serve the community and to uh, try our best to help the agriculture sector uh, to take some advancement. I also uh, can mention that uh, for our agriculture to take uh, uh, some development, we need input uh, supply more input is an input investment. We also need a, a kind of agriculture mechanization. We are still using the very best traditional way of uh, producing food, where we are still using hoes. I remember the last uh, uh, in the last uh, AGRF summit, uh, the president of the African Development Bank mentioned that we have to put the hoe in the museum. Uh, but it was a dream that me, I can still share today, that we need to deploy mechanization activities and tools to the community for us to produce for the next 9 billion people who will be uh, habitating the world and to the most youthful population that, that is actually booming in the cities and rural communities of Africa. All right. Thank you, Etienne, appreciate that. From Kigali, let's go out to Harare in Zimbabwe. Elizabeth Gulugulu, she's a youth delegate, Africa Youth Initiative on Climate Change. Elizabeth, what is your role? I work with a group of young people. Definitely what we do is to promote sustainable food systems through climate smart agriculture initiatives, agroecology initiatives, and also pave a way for young people to promote and also contribute into policy formulation. We definitely cannot talk about agriculture without the innovative side. So what I'm saying is innovation is the future of agriculture and enabling stakeholders should create a safe environment, a good environment for youth innovators to contribute. And these ideas are cross-cutting from pre-production level to production level to supply chain 
and to the consumption level. So I'm talking about the genetically modified seeds, I'm talking about gene banks. All this can be some of the ways of innovation. And young people can play well in that, coming up with good agricultural practices and doing research capacity. We need capacity when it comes to research. We need capacity when it comes to the technical aspect of things. We also need young people to be trained to be technical experts on how they can reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. They are practicing their farming. This is what we are talking about. And it, when it comes to consumption, we need to reduce our food losses. But what are we going to do with the food waste? Where are we taking it? How are we going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by uh, disposing our foods? Because it's, that food is biodegradable, so it's supposed to go back into the field. So basically, this is what I do, and this is what I've been working on. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Elizabeth. And thank you all, folks, for staying online. You all very bubbly, very wonderful. You have great spirit. Rispa, you look a little tired there holding your head, but it's okay. Just hang in there. <laughs> you see, we can see everything, Rispa. We see everything here. So let's <laughs> keep engaging. And from Harare, let's go to Ibadan in Nigeria. Olawole Olagbaju. He's a managing director, Real People Concept. Olawole you heard the president, you heard his call. Your thoughts, what is your role? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, and um, we also appreciate uh, His Excellency for that great um, thought-provoking uh, speech he made. Now, for me, I looked at the gap that exists um, in the industry where I operate. Uh, I would say in the last 10 years, Real People Concept has um, provided and supported um, livestock technology for improved livestock uh, productivity. And um, in recent time, because of the failure of artificial insemination in the cattle breed improvement program of uh, the federal government, this has really dampened the spirit of um, a lot of uh, cattle farmers, you know, that want to improve on the breed of their cattle. Our cattle gives like two liters of milk on the average uh, per day. And um, if we want to also be food secured, we need to have breeds of cattle that can give us a little more. And so we embarked on a project that we call RPC Cattle Hub to improve on the milk yield of our cattle by introducing exotic uh, uh, genes of um, uh, bulls that when their calves are also giving birth, we can have at least 10 liters of milk per day. So I believe in identifying the gap that exists and uh, taking steps in uh, filling the gap, and that is what uh, we, have, uh, we have started uh, to do. Hmm. And one of the things I also want to mention Olo, is Olo, that Olo. Um, we should, yeah, yeah. Is, is it working? Is it working increasing the, the milk production? Well, uh, Jeff, this is a project that we just started. And uh, this was born out of the fact that there is need for us to improve our milk yield locally. And if we have to do that, we need to improve on the breeds of our cattle. And that is what we are doing by introducing exotic uh, uh, genes to our cattle for this improvement program, mm. Jeff. Okay. From Nigeria, let's go back to Zimbabwe in Bindura, to be precise. Jessica Muzabindo at Bindura University of Science and Education. Jessica, your thoughts? Oh, okay, my thought. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my thought, I think that uh, my role as someone who's coming from a university, I have finished my master's degree in food security and sustainable agriculture. I believe that as a, as a holder of a master's degree, I should ensure on capacity building, uh, sharing knowledge to young farmers out there so that they can be able to uh, be resilient in face of climate change or maybe uh, climate adaptation. So I need to teach them skills on how they can adapt and how can they also have value addition for their resources uh, which they can have? For instance, we have farmers who engage into uh, uh, bee, uh, beekeeping. Uh, we can only not get uh, honey from those uh, from that product. 
there are many benefits which can come from from beekeeping. Hence, if we capacitate our farmers, teaching them how they can value, uh, the, how can they value, uh, do value addition on beekeeping, the value chain which is uh, which comes along. We also know that instead of just doing it as a subsistence for their um, uh, well-being and livelihoods, they can also do that uh, as a commercializing, which can also improve in their livelihoods, bringing income to their uh, families. So I believe that uh, as well, we can teach them uh, technology, more technology, which is uh, advanced, which they can produce more honey, or um, more. Some of uh, our farmers, we've noted that they engage into uh, um, they harvest edible uh, insects, but you see that those uh, insects, they are available seasonally. So it means that they need to be taught uh, on preservation of those uh, uh, insects such that they can still have them during the period when they are not available. So my mm. point is like, we also, I believe my role is to engage them and link them with organization. We can help them to, uh, with uh, finances, since some of them, they cannot produce much because of lack of finances. So I believe like as a youth, I should help those, um, I should help them to link them with uh, supporters, uh, which can help them um, market and also market their product. All right, Jessica, thank you so much for that. From Bindura in Zimbabwe, let's come back to the Kigali Convention Center. I'm gonna open the floor. Three gentlemen have spoken from the floor. I need a lady to speak because we all know the backbone of agriculture in Africa is women. Is there a woman who would like to contribute anything on the floor here live? No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Anybody, any contribute? What is your role? How will you get us there? What, okay, do I have a microphone, anybody? They said if Muhammad doesn't come to the mountain, mountain comes to Muhammad. Where's the microphone? There you go, ah, there we go. Tell us who you are and who you represent, please. My name is Mzawa Maria Povido. Uh, I was involved in uh, agriculture as a technician in, uh, in uh, e-craft, which is a world of forestry printer. And uh, I'm doing uh, agriculture here in Kigali. I have uh, some farms. And uh, what you have to do as, we, as women and youth uh, to contribute uh, in improving our agricultural sector, I think we have to empower women, as we always say it, and uh, they are really conscious, conscient to, to be involved. As others have said, we have to to ensure their their training and their education. We have to uh, to support them because mm. where uh, I work in different uh, rural area, I see uh, from uh, most of women are really involved in uh, uh, vegetable produ production and. They are struggling in post harvest because they really, really uh, lose more in uh, in post harvest. So they need they, they need more access to markets. You think? Sorry. They need transportation to the yeah, market. Transportation uh -huh. Yeah, transportation. They, okay. they have to be uh, really uh, trained on post harvest mm -hmm. on transport. Right. And uh, to access. Uh, those uh, particular uh, markets. Market yeah. and uh, what, what are you growing? What do you have on your farm? In my farm, I grow maize. Only maize? Yeah. 
in, in Takrop View there. How big, is, how big is your farm? Two hectares. Two hectares, well, four acres. Why did you go into farming? Sorry? Why farming? You could have been an IT expert somewhere, or <laughs> doctor. Why farming? I'm making, uh, I make farming because I really like it, and I want to contribute uh, to food security and uh, to make uh, uh, agriculture sector uh, more really strong Thanks. and to, to see what our challenges farmers are really facing in their activity. Yeah, so well done, you. well done. You're going to do well. Yeah, give a round of applause. I mean, you, yeah, well done. Very good. Folks, I'm going to come back to you online, and uh, Ify and Olivier I haven't forgotten you, okay? So, you know, don't worry. Is there anyone who hasn't said anything before I ask one question, then we can wrap things up very shortly? Anyone who hasn't contributed? Did I miss anyone out? I hate missing people out. So many names. All right. I haven't. Ify, I haven't forgotten you. Olivier, I will come to you, okay? Don't worry. Before I do that, let me throw a question to everyone around the room, okay? Uh, and it's real quick, it's real quick. And again, we'll start with you, um, Nima Grace Mutemi, at the chair, the board chair of 4-H Foundation in Kenya. If you had one wish, this is a wish list, and don't take too much time, but if you had a wish list, Nima Grace, what would it be? Jeff, that's a very tough question. But top of my wish list would be engaging young people in decision making. And this means, you know, young people ends at 25, according to the universal uh, definition. And in Africa, we go up to 35. If those people are not being engaged in decision making at the farm level, cooperative uh, boards, uh, and farm associations, you know, trade unions, then we are missing the point because okay. we are representing the majority of uh, the African population. All right. Mashiri, your wish list. What will be top of your wish list? Mashiri Zvarimwa. Yes, Jeff. So my wish list is to, uh, to see a, a strong establishment of uh, uh, the ecosystem of uh, innovative entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs in Africa. So yeah, that, that's straight to the point. A yeah. very strong uh, ecosystem of uh, innovative entrepreneurs. Good point, thank you. For luck, Johnny, top of your wish list. Yes, I think I'll piggyback of Mashiri is a strong ecosystem of young entrepreneurs in uh, Africa that have an, where the government provides them an enabling environment as well uh, to operate in the uh, agricultural space. Mm. Ibrahim Sise, what would you wish for if you had one wish? Uh, just unmute, unmute. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it would be uh, for every young person to be the powerhouse of every African nation. That's who we are. We are the powerhouse of every African nation. So my wish would be three things. One is capacity in terms of uh, knowledge and resources. Second will be capabilities in terms of quality. And lastly will be abilities in terms of our skills and talent. Uh, so Ibrahim, I asked you for one wish and you asked for three. Uh, how does that work? <laughs> invest, invest in youth development. Oh. Investment in youth development. I'll take that. Unike <laughs> Firinari, one wish. Predictable markets. As a smallholder farmers, it's very difficult to grow crops without knowing how the market is out there. And I think it runs through the entire value chain. So for me, access to markets and predictable markets works for me. Very good. Works for me too. One Joe Risper, one wish. Unmute. If I were to pick just one thing out of my many wishes, I would go with an open market in Africa. Our borders open to each other and we trade with one another because I believe we have a large enough population to consume what we produce and to encourage as much farming within our continent as possible. Absolutely. Esnaf Divasoni, one wish could be your command or our command. Esnaf? 
Uh, my one wish is on women empowerment. If we empower the rural population, especially the rural women who are at the backbone of food production in the rural communities, we can get to where we want. So my wish is for empowerment of all rural women, especially the youths. I'm with you there 100%, Asna. Thank you so much for that. Mohammed Abdinur in Mogadishu, your one wish. Uh, my first priority wish is to organize, you know, and assist youth, both, you know, those who dropped out and, you know, those who graduated to keep training and capacity building. And then to, to get a strong, you know, skills and knowledge. Yeah. you know, to affect the food security. Skills and knowledge, very important. Thank you, Mohammed. Amanda Namai, go get us, go get them, your one wish. Yes, uh, let me go get them with my one wish would be Pan-African collaboration amongst the youth in agriculture. And that is the core and what sits at the heart of the Go Getters Africa community. Mm -hmm. Pan-African collaboration, very good. Elizabeth Gulu Gulu, one wish. My wish is to have a generation of young people that are capacitated, young African men that can negotiate for our natural resources, understand sustainable food systems and food security itself. That's my own wish. Excellent. Olawole Olagbaju, your one wish, other than cows producing more than two liters. Yeah, Jeff, uh, my wish is actually to see a resilient food system that is sustainable, that enhances the elder living and the prosperity of the African people. Resilient food system, fantastic, well put. Jessica Muzamindo, your one wish. Uh, my wish is uh, for resources availability, especially finance to our young youths, who, to the most vulnerable. Who have the no who have the knowledge but they don't have the capacity to do that because they are uh, they have limited finances hmm. very well put thank you all stay on because we're going to get some summations and we're going to start ladies first ifi umuna she's a program lead at nourishing africa ifi give us your summation going forward and keep in mind the questions the president asked what is your role what do you want? If he go ahead. Hi, Jeff. So to answer the question first, I think for me, what I want to see is youth at the helm of the conversations, having a seat at the table and not the back seats in front, discussing what we need for us to move forward. Uh, I think it's important that we set, we are part of the conversation when policies are set that affect us directly. And through my work at Nourishing Africa, what we currently do is to try and provide the resources, tools, and information needed for these entrepreneurs, particularly young entrepreneurs, to scale their businesses across the continent. And to sum up what my colleagues and I have said today, we've seen a lot of uh, people talk about collaboration and partnerships, Balak and Amanda in particular. And I think this is really important because for us, we've really realized that it's important to be able to partner to grow. We can't do it alone. We don't want to do it alone. So we need to ensure that we, we collaborate for success. Another idea of, that's been passed around through various of my colleagues is the idea of sustainability. Oftentimes we see that we do things for X amount of time and thereafter it doesn't continue. We need to find ways that whatever it is we're doing, we move forward in a sustainable manner. And this also ties into education, skills, transfers, and, cap and capacity building. Uh, oftentimes, we see that some certain amounts of people have the skills needed to perform the duties needed to be, while others don't. And for us to all grow and for us to all move forward together, we need to ensure that we all have the, the same skills. And we might have different skills, but we know each other, and that's when the collaboration comes back in. Hmm. And lastly, uh, for me, we need to think about agriculture and food as agribusinesses. The emphasis is on business. Oftentimes people really talk about agriculture as a hobby or as something you do on the side. And that to me is unacceptable. If you want to be in, everybody wants to be in a sector that is profitable, that is thriving, that's exciting. So we need to treat this as a business. We need to ensure that whatever we're doing makes market sense and that we do so sustainably. 
uh, if he, it would be unfair if I left you out of my wish list. So what would be your one wish, Ify? Uh, I wish for gender equity. I really want women to be seen as equal partners, equal access across the board, particularly in the sector, because when you feed and educate and provide access to women, you're doing so for so many other people. Absolutely. Well put, Ify, well put. Olivier Mouvandimwe, he's a program manager, Rwanda Youth in Agribusiness Forum. Olivier, your thoughts? Yes. Oh, thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, complementing to the wish of the all participants here, I would say that uh, uh, everything which has been spoken is very right. And uh, if it is done rightly, it can contribute to the transformation of uh, agriculture from subsistence to productive and market oriented as the, our excellency uh, wishes for, for for the country or for the world to prosper into the very chain development. Uh, actually, I can uh, sum up all of this by, by saying that uh, the agriculture, our agriculture need empowered youth. Empowered youth who bring innovation to increase productivity and of course bring the system of resilience to cope with the any incidents which can, which can come in our way to stop our progress toward productivity. So that, that is the one which is, must be like mandatory to all youth. So, and uh, that must goes with the researchers. Research institution, they can do the research to see how we, can, we find the input which can produce some much more to feed the, 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 the increasing population of, of Africa, of the countries because today we are, we are 1.2 billion, if I'm right, but uh, in, within uh, 10 years, the number of the growing population of Africa will be just almost, uh, almost 2.4 billion. So we need to think of that. Olivia. Another thing is that uh, once the technology and the innovation has been used, the, the productivity, but the production will be available on the market. Olivia. Then we, we will need to strengthen our marketing system of our product eh, to okay. see whether we can reduce post harvest loss. Unless we bring the technology increasing productivity without looking on how we can cope with post harvest loss, every effort that we have been investing in will be nothing. Okay, so Olivier, we need to think Olivier. about the impressive market, yeah, Olivier. reducing post harvest and also caring about value addition mm. so that we can at least keep our produces, our agri-food produces for a longer period without to perish. And then another thing is that we need to care about to our institutions. For example, in some of the cooperative, youth, youth cooperative, you can find that there is no any record for what they have been doing for the last two years. That is very challenging. And yet we claim that the financial institutions doesn't give the loan for LAS because they don't, they don't find any trace of our business doing. So we need to think business mindfully to see how can at least convince the financial institution to invest in us, to, tra uh, to trust us, to give us the money that we can uh, use in expanding our business toward the progress of a country, toward the progress of, of of the world as the, our contributions is the contribution to world development. Okay, Olivier, uh, Olivier, Olivier. Yes. Before you go on, you heard President Kagame earlier. What is your role to lead us, the people of Africa, to where you want to be? What is your role, Olivier? Okay, my lord. My lord, I'm not going to, to speak as my lord because I'm representing Rwanda is an agribusiness forum right now. So let me say our lord. Our lord is first of all to empower the youth to take part in the increasing productivity of the country, in productivity among us ourselves. So the lord of us as Uriap or as Rwanda is an agribusiness forum is to empower youth so that, so that they can empower themselves 
toward bringing innovations, bringing a innovation that will increase productivity, then bringing innovation which will dispose the harvest, bringing innovation which will take agriculture in, from subsistence to market-oriented, to innovative, to knowledge-based farming on without considering just only farming, but farming with the purpose. Farming with a purpose. I like that, Olivier. And I'm not going to leave you out of my wish list. So what is your one wish? Uh, my wish is that uh, all the partners in agriculture should be looking at the youth because the youth is the future of Rwanda, is the future of Africa, is the future of the world. Think of the, of the youth. An investment, think of the youth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olivier, thank you. Folks, I could talk to you all day long, you know that, I'm just getting warmed up and the energy in this room is incredible. So, do you wanna go on or shall we just go home? Let's go on. Okay, thank you for one person approving. Let's go home. <laughs> Two. <laughs> we are home already, so we can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well done. All right, um, in as short, a phrase or a couple of sentences as you can, and we're gonna go around the room again. The biggest challenge facing you guys right now. And don't give me a whole thesis on it. I just want the biggest challenge. Nima Grace Mutemi, first you, board chair, 4-H Foundation Kenya, biggest challenge. Uh, Jeff, the agricultural sector is unstructured. If you went into the agricultural sector today after graduating, there's no saying where you're going to be in three years, in five years, you know the normal progression. Young people need structure. If you're a HR today, you know within three years of experience, this is where you're supposed to be. Without uh, professionalizing the sector, you know, we, we will keep attracting young people, but we will keep, uh, they'll keep dropping off. Mm. So the biggest challenge is that lack of professionalism that, you know, th that makes us take ad be taken advantage of by the middlemen and by everyone, you know, who wants to play mm. dirty games, you know, who wants to uh, interfere with market prices. So I, I think for me, for young people, that's the biggest challenge yeah. that we've got. Very good. Structure. I like that, Nima Grace. Structure. Mashiri Zvarimwa. Biggest challenge? Yes, Jeff. For me, uh, the biggest challenge is uh, resources in all their form and shape. Because resources can be financial, can be land, can be uh, access to technology or markets. But really, in one word, it's resources. Hmm. Falak Tijani. Biggest challenge? challenge for me will be lack of information. As a consultant, as a health consulting, what we do is we provide ecosystem solutions, we conduct research, and to provide strategies to develop different organizations, from governments to development organizations, to private sector actors. And having access to information is one of the biggest challenges that we are facing, as with information, information is power. With information, we can inform policy development, we can develop strategy for different organizations, farmers, Information is power. How true, Falak. Thank you for that. Ibrahim Sisse in the Gambia. Biggest challenge? Biggest challenge is lack of vision and also lack of organization. So uh, young people, we want to get it now and then, which is practically impossible. And then we're not organized. As you see, we have different youth organizations. So. Uh, last year, the AU mandated that we come together so we can have a collective voice. Vision and organization. Fantastic. Vision, organization. I like that. Unike Firinari, biggest challenge? For me, it's collaboration. I think all of us seem to be doing the same things but in different spaces. So what I would like to see at the end of this summit is how all of us on this panel can come together and collaborate and see the way forward. What I'm doing in Zambia should be also be replicated in Zimbabwe, in Lagos, in Gambia. So for me, it's collaboration. If we collaborate, then we'll be able to pull this thing off. Strength is in numbers for me. Collaboration, love it. Wanja Rispa, biggest challenge. 
I think the biggest challenge I have faced and I've seen other fellow young people face in agriculture particularly is that our agricultural industry is heavily underfunded. And this is so terrible given that our country is heavily reliant on agriculture, yet for the past four years, the budget has been reducing every single year. So I do not understand how you want to incentivize young people to come into agriculture on one hand, yet on the other hand, you take away from them even the basic funding that should be sustaining the industry itself. Absolutely, good point there. Funding, funding, funding. Mohammed Abdin Nur. Biggest challenge? Yeah, uh, my, the big challenge that I've made is uh, lack of finance and lack of insurance is the big problem that we have now in our farmers. Because we have some stories like, you know, as I told before, some farmers, they lost, you know, their crop is in like one day. So like, you know, it comes like locust and they destroy all the crop. So, and, and, they, and they don't have to pay it, you know, to, to recover, you know, for their production. So lack of finance and lack of insurance is the main challenge that we have now. Something tells me Mohammed is in the insurance business. That's like the third time he's mentioned insurance, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Amanda Namai, <laughs> your mm -hmm. biggest challenge. <laughs> That was funny, Jeff. Um, so I will be succinct and concise. To me, um, what the, ch the greatest challenge I see is lack of a conducive enabling environment in the agriculture sector. Yeah. Lack of a conducive and enabling environment. Nice. Correct. Elizabeth Gulugulu. Yes, I think the biggest challenge is youth engagement by their respective governments. By engagement, I'm not only talking about having youth being invited to a certain meeting. That is actually the first step, not the end step. So after you invite youth to meetings, we now need to come up with sustainable solutions to continuously engage with youth so that they can actually add value to the government projects and also the same the, the government should actually also add value to the projects that the youth are doing. Thank mm. you. All right. You know, I just noticed that uh, Divine Intiokam has joined us. He's a managing director, Climate Smart Agriculture Youth Network. Divine, uh, if you can hear me, unmute and tell me where you are located. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, Divine, go ahead. It's a big, it's, it's a big pleasure indeed to speak on this. Where are you? I mean, after hearing all what my colleagues, I've been able to say in, in very, very interesting. Um, I think uh, one of the major issues we have to take consideration when we talk about food systems, we actually have to ensure the the food systems are nutritious and affordable as well, and that the assets farm to market should be something very considerable for us to look into as well. Mm. And then uh, I equally feel that the one the key message here I would actually share is uh, we need to collaborate at all levels, be from policy right up to rural use, and ensuring that the results are somehow sustainable for the upcoming future we have generation. Mm. Divine, Divine uh, Ntiokam in Niger, good to talk to you. Esnath, I think I left you out earlier on. Did I leave you out, Esnath? Biggest challenge? Uh, the biggest challenge is financial resources. Yeah. Because people are failing to produce well enough because they don't have the financial capability to do so. Yep, resources, funding, all that. Olawale, ola. Baju, biggest challenge? Yes. Yeah, Jeff, the biggest challenge I've seen is um, the image of farmers being projected. That is that of uh, poverty and suffering. You know, that has created a, a kind of a mental uh, information in the mind of youth that agriculture is about poverty and uh, suffering. So I think we need to begin to project agriculture in, in, in a prosperous manner uh, because there is actually prosperity in agriculture. Jeff. Mm. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that. Jessica Muzamiendo, biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge lies in we have the knowledge, but we don't have the resources, either money, land, or what. So at the same time, you end up saying you can, you want to be employed working for someone, but at the end of the day, you are in, unemployed because you have lack of uh, valid experience, which they want. So I feel that's where the greatest challenge lies. Absolutely. Ifi, Umuna, you must have challenges too. What, do, what is the biggest challenge according to you, Ifi? I think we need to generate our own data. We can't rely on other countries or institutions, international institutions like the FAO to generate our data. We need to do it ourselves. We need to do it locally and we need it to be easily accessible to all of us. Absolutely. Our own data to tell our own stories. Olivier Mouvandimwe, biggest challenge. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. The biggest challenge that uh, our youth has it's a capacity, capacity, capacity of uh, bring innovations because they are not empowered, eh? uh, capacity of uh, increasing productivity, capacity of uh, financial literacy. Then that is the first challenge. The second challenge is about the cash, yep. cash for investment, cash to invest. But however, I can challenge my colleagues, eh, my colleagues youth, we need to open our all senses and uh, look around ourselves and see all the challenges around us that might, can be opportunities. Absolutely. Whenever we have the open, open sense and find the challenges around us are opportunities, we are in the way of productivity. We are in the way of transforming our food system. Thank you very much. Out of challenges, we can get opportunities. Thank you very much, Olivier. And thank you, all our virtual guests from across the continent, from Lagos to Banjul, from Harare to Nairobi to Mogadishu, to Niger, and points in between. Thank you so much. Don't go away. I'd like us to do a, what is it, virtual selfie or whatever they call that. So don't, don't go away. Stay with us. And our live audience here at the Kigali Convention Center, thank you so much for your time. You guys have been great. Give yourselves a round of applause, everybody. Go on. You can do that. And don't forget, you guys are the youth. Let's face it, and President Kagame has challenged you. Two simple questions. What do you want? And how will you lead us to where you want us to be? In other words, what is your role? What is your role? Think about that going forward in your respective countries and keep spreading the word. You guys know the hashtags. We've got several. Hashtag feed the cities, hashtag grow the continent, hashtag virtual summit, hashtag AGRF 2020, hashtag youth town hall. The handles are AGRF and also AGRA. And you can copy me in if you want at Koinange Jeff. It's been a pleasure, folks. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you all, live audience in Kigali. It's been a fantastic youth town hall. And thank you for tuning in. And keep tweeting, keep questioning, keep sending us messages. That's why we're here. Thank you for your time. Goodbye from Kigali. Mosaic. Just switch on those lights so we can